All right, I'm going to give an example of the data path, how the data path will work, and how this will be using RAM. Okay, so let's say the example is we're designing a system that's going to sort numbers. All of those numbers are going to go into an array. You can think of that array as being the, the RAM, the memory that we're going to be storing in. So let's say the numbers we enter are 10, 5, 11, 2, and 6. We have five numbers in that array. Now we're going to want to sort them. We're just going to go a simple way of sorting. It's not going to be the most efficient, but it'd be a way to do it. We're going to start on the left end, and we're going to compare two items, and we'll keep going through the list, swapping them if the second item is smaller. So we'll let's first start off by looking at 10, looking at 5. 5 is smaller, so they get swapped. Then you see five and 10 switch places. And then we would keep moving down the list. Now we look at 10, now we look at 11. They're fine, no swapping would be done. And we keep doing this. Next one, look at 11 and two, and then the, the two and the six uh, spots. And then we would go all the way back to the beginning until they were all were sorted, okay? So it'll just be a process that'll go over and over again. All right, so this is the data path I set out so we can do this sorting piece. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to say numbers come in. Numbers are switches. We have four bits. So let's say that's the numbers from 0 to 15 that we can take in. We're going to have our, our RAM. Our RAM is based off of a clock. There's a write enable to say we want to write to the RAM. There's an address that comes in, a data that comes in and then what we read out of the data. So that's all on the, the RAM. Okay, so let's talk about entering numbers in. Oh, and the other item is up here, I have a counter that I'm gonna use that counter to be the, the address. Okay, so let's do the filling in first. So you can see how the filling in item works first. First thing the state machine would do is reset the address. We're going to reset the address, so that address starts off as being a zero. There is a number that we're going to be put on the switches. That number was 10. Now, I want number 10 to be that very first element in that array. So that's address zero. So what am I doing? I am taking this zero, and I need to put that into the address. So one step in that state machine is going to do the address select so we can select the top item. I need to take the 10, and that needs to go through the into the data that we're going to be writing in. Well, the state machine is going to have to select this data select. So if this is our array, and our array now, we're going to put in 10. That 10 will be read in when we, in another step in the state machine, say, go ahead and write it. So the write enable will go to a, a 1. And then it has to come back down to a zero because we're not ready to write a, a new value in. So that's how we would get the, the, the 10 in. Okay, so after we get the 10 in, the next piece that needs to happen will be that the same machine will say, okay, increment that counter. So now it's no longer zero. It's a one, so we're gonna go to the next location. Uh, the next number comes in, somebody answers a five. This one has to go in as the address, we select this. This five has to go into the data, we select this. We do this right enable. We do all of that, the five shows up. What's going to happen again? The next thing that happens is we increment it. We're incrementing it. This will become a two. We will put the eleven. You know, we do that same thing again. We get we get the eleven pop up. Okay, so we keep doing that, and we will get all the elements into the array: uh, ten, five, eleven, two, and six. 
So let's say we did all of that. Okay, now we're ready to start doing the sorting. What do we say had to happen in the sorting? We're going to look at two elements and see if we need to swap them. So to get those two elements in, I'm going to have to read memory. I'll have to read it, and I'm going to use two registers to store the two numbers, and then I'm going to compare them so I know if they need to be swapped or not. Okay, so what would I do for that? How is this going to work in this, the state machine? Well, when we're ready to sort, we're going to reset. So we reset it, our address starts off at zero. Now, I have zero and one, so that's the zero spot, and I need to check the one spot. So I have this zero also come through, this adder to add a one to it. So zero plus one will give me a one. So that's how I'm getting the two addresses. The first thing I'm going to do is read the 10. So I'll send the zero through put the right value. I read it out. I'm going to say load it. And then I would get the 10 into this first register. That's all one step. Next step. I'm going to take the one. I need to read this five spot. That comes out. I'm going to say, OK, load that in. That's going to give me the five. Next thing is this compare is going to show that, oh, yeah, we needed to swap. So if I needed to swap these numbers, now this 5 and 10, you have to switch spots. The way I'm going to do that is I have already this 0. That's the address. But what's going into the, the zero? Oops, I got to make one extra one um, bigger. Okay, so let's make this mux have three items. Um, this five has to come out. Go through this mux. That's the data in. We select the right piece. And I'm going to say write. I write it. Now we get five into this spot. So five came into the first area. Okay, now we got to put the 10. We got to swap the 10 location. To swap the 10 location, I'm using this one path. So that's this spot right here. It's taking the 10 and doing, okay, select the right item through the MUX. We're going to write it, set the right enable, and now this one will become 10. When that is complete and we have swapped everything, so erase all of this. What's going to happen is we would say, OK, increment. We're, inc we're incrementing it. Address is 1, 1 plus 1. We get to 2. Now we are looking at 10 and 11. We're going to go through, read spot number one. Read spot number one, we want to put into this register. Spot number one is still the value 10, it's still 10. You know, we will reread it. It just happens that it ends up being a 10. Then we go through the second path. The two, we're going to read it comes out, we're going to say save it. But for us this time, that's not five anymore. Now this is 11. Okay, so we get that. We're going to compare them. Our compare will say, nope, no swapping needed. And then we can avoid doing all that writing. That, all that writing doesn't have to happen. We will increment it. And this will now go to 2. 2 plus 1 will get us to 3. 
And we keep doing this over and over and over again until we know that it's all been sorted. Right, so this gives you, it should give you an idea of what is in the data path, elements that we need. And then from these elements, your state machine is doing all the, the logic work. So you're going to have to work on coming up with your state machine to get this to work. Now, building this, while it seems like it's going to be real complex, there is no complexity in any of these units. The register, the two registers, you've done stuff like that already. It's just, you know, a process that has a reset, a clock, uh, a load now. If the rising edge, you know, save the, the register to this new value. The MUX, you did the MUX already. That was on one of the homeworks for the ALU uh, to do plus one. You can make a block just to take in an input, add one to it, comes out as the out output. The counter, we talked about how to do counters. The memory, we have items on how to do memory, compares. We've, we've done those items. So each of these blocks is one file of VHDL. And in that file for like the MUX and the adder to compare, it's all one line of code. The registers and the counter, yeah, probably like five lines because you have a process begin. Uh, if, else if, end process, you know, very few lines of, of code. Draw everything out because if you draw everything out, you can keep everything very simple. You should not have to write anything complex inside all of these blocks. Now, you're going to kind of keep that logic for your project. Your project is this QR code. I said you have to use memory. The memory you're using is to store, you know, the QR code image. So, you know, you're going to have these black boxes you're going to fill in. So for each one of those black boxes, the white boxes, you know, it is an 11 by 11 image. So it's an array of 121 um, items. So when you want to store this item right there, that's a black dot, you know, the data in is a one. The address for that spot is zero. Okay, so that's the, the same kind of setup. So think about this, think of how you're gonna do it. You need to have some way to make an address. Um, you can do it for counter. Like I said, there's different ways to, to view it. You can view it all as a 1D array, you can view it as 2D arrays. So you might have multiple ways to do an address. That is all up to how you wanna design your, your project. But hopefully this helps you get started.